Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our program Silent Voice from Colot. My name is Ali, and today also there is visitors and activists from Tel Aviv visiting Colot detention facility. And as we are running Silent Voice, uh, today also we're going to have uh, testimonies of visitors uh, uh, to see how they uh, think of Colot uh, detention uh, center. So these are a group of the people that we are sitting here and we are going to ask one by one. And Elliot is the, one of the uh, good activists and he's running all these uh, uh, events all the time and he came to visit us uh, regularly here in the detention center. And let me ask him first and see how and what he thinks of the law detention center. Please welcome my friend. Thank you. Elliot Glassberg. I know you're an active and you are helping these people and you're coming always in this But uh, I just want to ask you, what do you think? Yeah. Um, first of all, I think Cholot should not exist. And I see Cholot is a big shame. Israel and to my people. I think people who came here as refugees and asylum seekers should be treated with respect and dignity and shouldn't be put in a detention center for no reason in the desert. That's what, That's I what think. you see. Um, okay, uh, I would just want to ask you about uh, inside detention, um, the education is for heaven, and especially Hebrew is. Uh, as a language of the state, it's prohibited to be taught in What do you think of that? What, why? what do I think? It's hard for me to find the words to describe how sad and upset and angry that makes me feel um, because I'm a Hebrew teacher and as a Jewish person I've studied Hebrew my whole life and I went to special schools so that I could learn Hebrew which is the language of my people and the holy language and the ancient language and here in Israel I teach Hebrew to people that come from all over the world Jews and non-Jews and refugees and I know there are many times in Jewish history when Jews wanted to learn Hebrew and they wanted to learn Torah and they wanted to learn Jewish studies and they weren't allowed to and they learned it in secret and to know that there's a place here in the state of Israel where people aren't allowed to learn Hebrew and it's forbidden and people are still learning it secretly it makes me very, very upset. Um, but also very amazed at the refugees that insist on still learning Hebrew. Um, you make us proud. So. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate your I appreciate uh, concern you. about that. And we are also heading to ask uh, Sigal. Sigal is the, the... This woman, she worked more than 10 years in the refugee and asylum seekers community in Israel. She's actually a really amazing uh, woman and wow. she's usually come to visit Holod Detention Center. And I today just want to ask her about um, what her experience since the beginning of uh, uh, people, uh, asylum seekers come to Israel and then uh, what uh, she think of uh, Holo Detention Center. Uh, Sigal, you're welcome. Okay. Do you want me to speak about the fact that people of uh, asylum seekers in Israel, their history in Israel, or mostly Holo? <laughs> mostly Holo. Holo. Okay. So it's really important to focus on Holo, I think. Um, a few things. First of all, I've been coming to Holod from the first day before it was open. We had a demonstration, Gilad, me, and Orly and a few other people before the place was open. It was a very cold day and I remember uh, we didn't see anything because the people, the only people that were supposed to be in Cholot were the people that were left in Saharonim. There were 1,200 people left in Saharonim after the resolution of September. No, for a year and two months. Three months, something like this. From June 2012, September 2013, the Supreme Court said that Saharonim is not legal. It gave the country 90 days, and the country after almost 90 days, they opened Cholot. And some of the people in Saronim, they released. 
the rest of them they wanted to put back wanted to bring to Cholot. Uh, I remember after the first time I was here I was telling Gilad on the way back it was very cold that I'm not, not coming back to Cholot. <laughs> yeah, but, but I have coming. a community. <laughs> I have the community in Tel Aviv. I want to work with the community in Tel Aviv. Not two days later, the first group, yeah. as we remember, the March for Freedom, left Cholot, and we met them, Gilad and me and a few other people, we met them, and we went with them all the way to Jerusalem, yes. and then was the decision that I made that we must come to Cholot. That Cholot is a place that since we can meet the people, we need to uh, try and see what the situation is here. We've been coming here. The situation Cholot, I, is, in my view, is very difficult. It's, it's difficult to stay in Cholot. But what's, what's important to understand about Cholot is Cholot was planned, was planned specifically to break people, to make them break, to make the situation so difficult. People don't, don't take notice, but it's little things. You cannot bring anything to eat inside. You cannot bring soap inside. You cannot bring new shoes that are not on your foot. In the, it was very cold the first winter. There was no air condition uh, heaters. And I remember. Remember every little thing. It's like they plan in very detail. The food is not enough. When somebody is sick, he goes to the doctor. The doctor says, "Go back to your country." Everything you say about, go to your country. Go to your country. Go to your country. It's a message. I don't know if they still happen when the Cholot began. People used to, the uh, the uh, immigration used to take refugees to take them into uh, interviews, and they used to tell them they used to, the interview was go back, go back, go back. I have some people telling me that the interviews were very humiliating. That's true. Very difficult. That they knew what was difficult for you. Like if somebody came from Darfur, they would say to you, "You're not a man. You're not helping your country fight." Things that are psychologically are, yeah. and mentally. So I, I remember that, um, um, like Minister Zulai said, said um, we make we have to make the life of asylum seekers miserable, uh, voluntarily leave the country. And yes. I think that's like the aim. That is the aim. All of these uh, things. But thank you very much. Um, I want to also have uh, another, another idea of another idea of the people. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Sigal. welcome. And um, let us go to see uh, Julia. Hey, Julia, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to Where meet you, from? you too. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, that's deep. So, uh, as you. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my second time. Right? Okay, so. Uh, So it it does you know they talk about it as an open prison um, and I very much see the prison aspect of it. I mean there's it's closed. There's barbed wire everywhere. Um, it feels very uh, confining, and I can't imagine living here. I mean I, I think. I think the resilience of the, the, the people who live here is just inspiring. Um, and, you know, as you can see, we're in downtown Cologne, and it goes to show um, they're making the best of a bad situation. But I think it's very clear, I mean, just by looking at um, where you where they are forced to live, that yeah. this is a prison, this is run by the Israeli prison system, yes. and this is designed to break people. Thank you very much, uh, Julia. Uh, uh, we will have to have the, another... Uh, uh, do you guys, somebody want to uh, be interviewed about um, the Cholot? Just, we just ask in random. How about you, Alexei? You wanna, uh, you want to tell us? Doing, so, yeah, uh, nice to meet you first. Hello. Um, what's your name? Alexa. Alexa, okay, nice you? to meet you. Um, I know that you came before this. Yes. Yes? And you, you're from the US. Okay, good. Uh, nice to meet you. But I just want to ask you about um, a lot. What do you think of a lot? Sure. Cholot is a very problematic uh, policy and way of dealing with the asylum seekers in Israel because while it is common for a lot of countries to detain people when they first arrive in a country and then to process their asylum claims and determine whether or not they're refugees, Israel does this once they've already been in the country for many years and it's 
not, it's pretty much unprecedented in the Western world in the amongst the developed countries. So I think that Cholot is really problematic and it serves a completely different purpose than it does in other Western countries and it's really undemocratic. Wow. Thank you very much. So, I mean, because I also have to another friend. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to have... Um, I'm going to have uh, Hagid, she's uh, an actress. She's working with the uh, Sanem City community for a long time. She's also know uh, all the rules and she's been coming a lot very often. And today we are meeting her again and we want her to tell us about what she thinks of uh, her lot again as uh, we have testimonies. <laughs> gentlemen um, this is how uh, our group conversation is going to be end and uh, uh, this is how uh, the Israeli and um, another international uh, people think of Holo detention facility um, please follow me on wave news blog and Tumblr website and also on Facebook page silent voice from Holo and thank you very much for now